Man, this show is like Hunger Games meets Escape Room. It is so much fun. Let's talk about it. What is up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking Alice in Borderland. Netflix provided me with screeners for the first few episodes. Wanted to finish it before this review. This is a spoiler-free review, but after that ending, we may end up doing another video. Leave your thoughts below, and if you enjoyed this video and you want to drop a thumbs up, let me know if you guys had some fun with this. So, Alice in Borderland. A group of bored delinquents are transported to a parallel wasteland as part of a survival game. You have kind of our main character here. He's a jobless video game obsessed young man. And then he uh, discovers that he and a few friends have been sent to this version of Tokyo that is empty, strange, mysterious, uh, a little bit scary. And they have to compete in all of these different games to not only make kind of a new life for themselves, but to survive. You have a young woman who comes in and she's been doing this alone the entire time. They kind of uh, team up and solve the mystery one after another as they are risking their lives and confronting what it means to live. And that's essentially what this show comes down to in the final few episodes. But prior to that, during the setup, we're trying to figure out, okay, what are the rules? What happens if you don't want to be in the game altogether? It's not good, let me tell you. And how are they going to make it through this life? Because to survive, you have to play the games. And it's so cool how this is laid out. Within this city, when there is a game happening, that portion of the city lights up and everyone uh, who is still alive kind of migrates to that area. And depending on how you do in these games, you are provided with a visa to survive on because you're not only competing in these games, you are having to survive in this desolate wasteland version of Tokyo. And it's so cool in the first episode how this happens. Uh, these three characters are just off, having a bit of fun. They get into this small confined space and they come out on the other side thinking, wait a second, wasn't everyone just here? And then they start to realize that, okay, clearly it's been a longer period of time than we expected or we're just in an alternate version of where we were to start, and that's pretty much how everyone in this game is treated, and we don't know why they're there. We don't know how they're there. We slowly start to uncover some of these mysteries as this plot unravels, and uh, the answers to some of these questions are really great. Now, in terms of negatives, I will say there were maybe a few subplots that I didn't care as much about, so each of our main trio, they're kind of dealing with something different. You have girlfriend issues, you have family issues, mother issues, and once you start to uh, figure a few of these backstories out, as weird as some of them are, you understand where they're coming from, and that's when you start to root for these characters. Now, nothing is off limits in Alice in Borderland. It is bloody, it is a hard R rating, there is violence galore, but... Everything, well not everything, but most things were created as shock factor, aka when it happens, you're sitting back going, I can't believe that character just died, or I can't believe how this character just died, and at the beginning of this review, I made a comparison to a movie like Escape Room, the very first episode, the first puzzle that they have to solve. They're confined in this space where they have to go through a specific door in every room that they encounter. You have the good door or the bad door. They don't know which one is which, and they have to sort of solve a puzzle to survive, and you realize that you don't want to go through the bad door, because as soon as someone does, um, let's just say they meet a fate that we wouldn't be a big fan of, but Every single game is laid out in that way, and every game is creative, and that's what I found so fun about this. Now, as for the Hunger Games comparison, you're not necessarily going around and killing each individual player, but it's more so this fight for survival that we often see in these kinds of post-apocalyptic shows that they add into here. This is also based on a manga that I've actually heard good things about. I've never read it. I didn't know anything going into the story, and clearly, Alice in Borderland... Alice in Wonderland, you're going to incorporate a, a few of those things that makes that story run. They're incorporated, and I really like the way that they did it. Again, I wasn't a huge fan of certain moments of dialogue and some of the kind of the wacky hijinks that our characters get themselves in in the midst of this post-apocalyptic, really dark, uh, hardcore, hard R-rated madness. But I can push a few of those things to the side and say, 
This is a fantastic setup. Uh, this was so much fun. You take Escape Room, that concept, you expand it for eight episodes. You get more time with the characters. You understand more so where they're coming from. You get the opportunity to uh, do more of these puzzles, which were really entertaining. And that's the key word here. Alice in Borderland is just thoroughly entertaining. Now, when it comes to the captions, I watched this, the subbing route. I did sub because I tried dubbing and I just wasn't a fan of some of the dubbing. Uh, you see some of the translations for certain words and this happens very often on Netflix, but it just wasn't accurate uh, and it wasn't describing to me how the character felt in that specific moment. So you go subbing, still probably not completely accurate, but at least it was better than the dubbing. Uh, and I really liked getting those emotional performances from the characters, especially a handful of moments, uh, whether it's a little bit of relationship drama, whether it's learning more about your mother or your family, and you guys will know exactly what I'm talking about when you watch this show. Uh, and as for the way that it ends, I was also a fan of. I, oh man, I wanna talk about it though, because there are some things I'm like, whoa, okay. All right, let's 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 see where this goes. But as for the fun factor, Alice in Borderland has that. As for the visuals, Alice in Borderland has that. I love the look of this city, especially when these games pop up and we get those uh, amazing wide shots that lead us into the next scene. Uh, and I recommend this. This is a big recommendation for me. Alice in Borderland uh, is going to get a 78%. Again, if you guys like this video and you enjoyed Alice in Borderland, drop this bit a thumbs up and let me know, would you like to see a video talking about that magnificently crazy ending? Because there is a lot to talk about. Okay, guys, the Disney investor meeting is this evening. We may have some big news, so we're going to talk about that as well as some reviews coming out tomorrow. The embargo list for News of the World. I was able to check that out with Tom Hanks. We're going to talk about it. Okay, appreciate it big time. I'll see you later.